This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Stick around till later to learn more. Uh huh, uh -huh. come inside. Uh, thank you very much for seeing me today, Sergey. Appreciate it, man. You I better have some good suggestions for our next big Ubisoft game. Ha uh ha, -huh, dude, don't worry. Here we go, okay? One of our biggest IPs ever. Splinter Cell, let's bring it back, baby, okay? Now, a single player experience that makes you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Single player. Like, no one else play with you. Oh, uh, uh, no. But he hear me out, okay? And also, in terms of the story, instead of it being all over the place and you get to control the pacing, a linear story. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Linear. Like, we have to write this story. They don't make this story. We write this story. Uh, the, um, maybe. Uh, in terms of the map, bro, let's talk about the map. Now, the map, instead of being like, you know, some big open world in terms of just being a one single linear map that you get to go through but it's no open world no map. open world no open world in oh, a uh, ubisoft game uh, uh, no open world the, uh no xp i was thinking no xp at all so we'd have to do those silly xp boosters and all that kind of stuff how will we do the monetization without the xp booster that was that was my last point um no no extra monetization you just buy the game once mm. Security, yes. Mm. Good. Guys, I rode to work today. I'm such a thick boy. But slowly but surely, you will see a transition like Rocky after the fight when he just looked terrible. <laughs> <laughs> his face was all swollen. And all swollen Expect and face to get more swollen. Okay, so... Spoo, yeah. uh, there's no transition there. I tried to think of a segue, couldn't think of one. Let's talk about Ubisoft and what's going on over there. So okay. right now, Ubisoft is being rocked by scandal after scandal in relation to its culture. Uh, we're talking about sexual harassment. We're talking about credible rape accusations. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a culture of sexism, uh, boys club, you name it. It's rife within Ubisoft at the moment. It has been talked about a lot. Uh, and more and more news comes out every day in relation to this. Mm. Today's story relates to a guy named Mike Laidlaw, who was the creative director of the Dragon Age series. He left Bioware to helm a new project at Ubisoft and then he left 12 months after that, and now he's back at Bioware. Mm. The question is, what happened in that 12 months while he was at Ubi? Well, we sort of know now as a result of Jason Schreier's reporting, and it relates directly to one of the people that has been removed because of all of the cultural reform stuff taking place at Ubisoft right now. Not just one of the people, like the person at the, the moment. The dude. The dude, Sergey. Hauskowit? Something like that. Something Hauskowit. Like Hauskowit or something like that. Now, he was the big dog pretty much at Ubisoft. Now, as everyone pretty much knows, he was the one that if he didn't like a creative idea, it was out. He was the ultimate bottleneck dude. Yeah. Every single creative idea had to go through him. If he didn't like it, yeah. if it was an open world, if it was an RPG <laughs> yeah. shit, he was going to say and, no. And this is very important because uh, he was the yeah, chief creative lead for Ubisoft. He was the number two man essentially in that company reporting yep. directly to the CEO. He had oversight over every single one of their projects. He was the gatekeeper. He greenlit projects, he shut them down. A lot of people say, oh, how could one person have so much power? And like, you know, it's, it's impossible that Ubisoft's whole sort of like design philosophy is a result of this one guy. Mm -hmm. I've got some friends that work at Ubisoft and certainly speaking to some of them, it is clear this dude had a lot of power when it came to deciding what would and what not happen at Ubisoft. The and yeah, setting the tone for their games. Uh, look, there's also, you know, uh, things that have gone down of, that have people spoken about when he didn't like ideas, he would just like smash the table with his head and make a very famous now grunt internally yeah. if he didn't like particular <laughs> <What>? <laughs> ideas. One of my Ubisoft friends actually told me, he's like, yeah, I've heard that sound. <laughs> you know? So that's the thing, right? This guy apparently was just like obnoxious about the way he would give feedback to people yep. and respond to ideas. But the Ubification that we know and loathe today was very much a result of this guy. Mm. He built the open open world Ubisoft thing that we all came to love for a while until it just didn't change and then eventually got worse as they then added all this RPG light bullshit yep. on top of it and then they tried to monetize the fuck out of everything, right? Yep. He was the architect for that, those three parts of the strategy, that was him. Yeah, I feel like, you know, it was pretty fetched for a while and then uh, Breakpoint came along. I really feel like Breakpoint was the moment. Breakpoint was the moment where everyone was like, okay, you know what, maybe this yes. isn't working anymore. Correct. After that, they put a council of nine people under Sergey to try and start 
kind of, you know, having a voice against his own creative ideas kind yes. of thing. Hoping, I think, to stop the bottlenecking and stopping this ubification that we're seeing all the time. But look, a lot of the, in a lot of ways, he was untouchable, Sergey. People thought, doesn't matter if there was nine people there, he was still going to be the one that was greenlighting things. Correct. And this is a perfect example of a game that was going to be greenlighted, or a lot of people would have loved to, but it didn't go ahead. So Project Avalon was a King Arthur-esque type game that was in development. It was in development roughly for a year, it seems. He didn't, Sergey did not like the setting of this particular game yeah. and completely cut it off. Now it says in the article- This article by to, the way is from Jason Schreier. Yes it is. It's on Bloomberg so we can't get to it. We're looking at a, a Eurogamer mirror here though sort of like a summary of it. So thank you Jason Schreier thank for you, Jason your reporting. Thank you Jason Schreier. And thank you Eurogamer for summarizing it. Yes, and it does so, say in the article here, it had to be better than Tolkien. Yes. So that is a tall it order. It is a very tall order. You don't walk into <laughs> any meeting like guys, I've got the next Lord of the Rings, okay? <laughs> that is hard. Hard. And it's not a person you can take seriously. Okay? <laughs> it's not easy. So uh, basically this game was apparently meant to have some kind of, uh, it was like Arthurian legend and it actually had some Monster Hunter world-esque oh. kind of components with like some hunting in there as well. Uh, either way, they had some cool ideas but they were but Surge didn't like the setting. They all, they tried to reboot the setting into ancient Greek times mm. and then also into uh, sci-fi setting, but neither of those worked. That is why Mike Laidlaw ended up leaving after a year. He worked on this thing, was really passionate about it, and then boom, he left. Now, Mike Laidlaw has not gone out on the on the record about this publicly. This is all just uh, Jason Schreier's reporting, so we can't yep. say this is all definitively the case. Uh, but you know, Jason Schreier is very rarely wrong about this stuff, so he's put his name to it. It's probably true. Hundred percent. That's. 100%. I mean, I, can't, I just said it can't be 100%. You just say 100%. You, know, <laughs> I said. you guys know what I'm talking about. So, Mike Laidlaw has left, of course. Now, on the side of that, to show Sergei's power also, there was examples of Cassandra. Now, they were going to, when they made Assassin's Creed... Odyssey. Odyssey, of course. Uh, there was the idea that women don't sell. <laughs> Samus. But uh, <laughs> he didn't think that women sell as much. So, they forced Assassin's Creed Odyssey to have a male and female character in that particular game. So I feel like it was not only creative ideas, but there was also, you know, unsupported data yeah. situations that he was cramming into games. You might say it was a case of forced diversity. Including a male protagonist. <laughs> <laughs> How about that comment section? Nice. Comment Dislike. section. <laughs> I think on top of this, we can assume, I certainly assume that the reason we have not gotten a Splinter Cell game this generation is because it did not fit with Surge's design philosophy. He has gone on the record in the past about mm. the fact he wants all his games to be open world and he wants them to be systemic in their storytelling. This is his favorite word. And systemic. monetized. I and think. monetizable, right? Splinter Cell is a linear mission-based game. It is not systemic storytelling. It's a cla it's like an it's a it's a it's a video game, man. It's an uh -huh. actual video game, not this open world like cookie cook <laughs> cookie cutter garbage that we came to expect from Ubisoft later on. Yeah. Okay, you, I think this is mm. why we never saw a Splinter Cell game, and I am hopeful now that this I guy is gone. We can get one. I agree. I think that uh, they could have definitely made the open world kind of Metal Gear Solid Five esque kind of Splinter sure. Cell game. Sure. They could have done that. They may have had a lot of internal discussions and whatever. Who knows, right? But we haven't seen one since. A hell of a long time. That's also, I think like 360 or some shit has been that long, right? Yeah. Uh, it is very ripe for them to bring it back. You know, Metal Gear Survive was an absolute meme. It, it's crazy to see they haven't brought it back. And now because Sergei is gone, I am expecting to see a Splinter Cell. And it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. If, if they brought out a non-monetized, single player, curated experience with Splinter Cell, it would probably sell like hotcakes if it was done right. And it's street cred. Like it's not, not everything has to be goddamn monetized to the hilt. Sure. Sometimes it's about making good products that gives you street cred, just like uh, Star Wars, uh, the um, a Jedi Fallen Order with yeah. EA. I agree. You know? I think that's it. I, I think Ubisoft right now has a chance to really reform themselves. Obviously, when it comes to their workplace culture, mm. uh, it's just, you know, they obviously need to make huge changes there with regards to their senior leadership and training people and all that sort of stuff. And it's and that is happening, it seems. They've started to take steps in relation to that. They've announced one initiative recently where, um, you know, your performance bonus is going to be linked to your sort of ability to create an inclusive workplace culture, right? So they are taking some steps there and obviously sacking a whole bunch of people, mm. doing sensitivity training. They're taking actions. Uh, that's all good. I also hope they're able to seize this opportunity to also like improve their games and just like get some new creative vision flowing through that business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they really Really need to change it up. Definitely, yeah. I feel like this is going to be a very unique opportunity in gaming where we're seeing 
a seismic shift in a particular, in a huge publication, like Pub publisher, a publisher. Sorry, I should say, uh, where everything from the ground up can be rebuilt in this moment in terms of the games, in terms of the work culture, in terms of the direction, in terms of their IP in general. Uh, sure, they've had some wins over the year with Assassin's Creed and everything, and, and you know, I think the games have been doing fine, but it is. You know, with Breakpoint, it was really looking down a cliff. Like it really needed to sure. fundamentally sh reshape the way it was doing it. Now, with this, with these huge changes, I think a lot of people are happy to press the reset button with Ubi and go, "Cool, what have you got next for me?" We've played Watch Dogs. Oh, no. It looked really good. Yeah. Uh, if they're able to change their work culture and their IP and their open worldness with every game, sure. I think a lot of people would be open and well and welcome those new changes. I think so too. I think so too. That's that it. Is it. So uh, that's the story, guys. No uh, King Arthur game. Can I say it would have been really cool to play a sick King Arthur game? I don't think we have. We ever seen a, like a really good King Arthur game? Um, I don't think we have. Why hasn't this been made? This is a shame. You kind of cool. I just realised now that I'm thinking this through. You guys really messed this up. That would have been cool. Go and make that game. Okay. Uh, uh, that's that's all I got. That's it. Goodbye. End, end the episode. Okay. Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain. I can't hear you. <laughs> Hide your location on the internet sea. Surfshark VPN. Unless you watch Netflix on different IPs. Surfshark VPN. If unlimited devices is something you wish. Surfshark VPN. And say public Wi-Fi is also on the list. Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN. Ha 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 ha. Oh, if you're looking to feel safe on public Wi-Fi and keep your location private, what better way to do it than use Surfshark VPN? Arr, use the code LATE and get 85% off and 3 extra months free. 30-day money-back guarantee. <laughs> Link in the description. <laughs>